Okay, first section we're going to look at uh, this week is section 3.3. Okay, and it's on the factor theorem. Um, and that relates to a couple other things like long division with polynomials and synthetic division. Uh, and we'll see a couple of those um, between today and tomorrow. All right, so just uh, kind of a reminder of what a root or what a zero is to an equation. Um, a root has nothing to really do with a square root. All right, so I saw a um, couple things on the test. I think one of the last questions was describe how continuity and the intermediate value theorem can be used to find the root of an equation. And a couple, couple people mentioned like doing things with square roots. Um, a root is just a number that you plug in and you get zero. That's all that a root is. Okay, nothing to really do with square roots. All right, so it's a solution to the equation f of x equals 0. Okay, another way to say it is a number a is a root if and only if you plug it into the function and get 0. Okay, so because it's an if and only if, that can be read forwards and backwards. Okay, if a is a root, then f of a equals 0. Or you can say if f of a equals 0, then a is a root. Okay, so that's a biconditional. So what we're going to do is look at using um, long division to find roots of polynomials, um, especially when something divides in without a remainder. Okay, because that, bless you, okay, that means something. If you divide a number into another number and you don't get a remainder, it has to do with the title of, of this section. Okay, but that doesn't always happen. Sometimes you, you do get remainders. All right, so let's say that I wanted you to factor the number 12. Okay, and I tell you that 3 is a factor. Okay, you can use that information somehow to figure out how to factor the number 12. Anybody tell me what you could do? I want you to factor 12, and I'm telling you that 3 is a factor. How would that help you figure out the other factor? About Andrew? Divide the factor by the total. Divide so divide so do three divided by twelve. Not quite. That would give me one fourth. Twelve divided by three. Yeah. If you want to factor something and you know you already are given one of the factors, take the number you want to factor and divide it by that number, and that tells you the other factor. Right, so basically, you know 3 times something would give you 12. To figure out what the something is, um, divide each side of that equation by 3. And that gives us the other factor, which in this case is 4. And we have that, negative 8x. And the next step below the linear term is just having... Oh, Trevor? The 3. That, and what term is that called? <coughs> yep. The it's a constant. All right, so we've got to make sure everything's represented. And now we've done that. Okay, so step 2. You're going to divide the first term of the divisor, which is this, into the first term of the dividend, which is that. Okay, and you're going to write the answer up above um, the line. You can put it anywhere above the line. It, it doesn't have to line up in a certain spot in this case. All right, so again, we're going to divide the first term of the divisor. We're going to divide x into x cubed. Okay, so what you should be thinking in your head is what that comes out to. Okay, x cubed divided by x. All right, so how about um, Kayla? If I do x cubed divided by x, what does that give me? Uh, well, let's, so when we're dividing um, two things that have the same base, what do you do with your exponents? Subtract. Okay, subtract your exponents. So in this case, the top has an exponent of 3, bottom has an exponent of 1. So what would x cubed divided by x to the first be? X to the 2. Yeah, x to the second. There we go. All right, so we get x to the second. Okay, now you're going to multiply back out that answer that you just got to each term in the divisor. And now is where we have to put the result under the correct column. 
Okay, now we have to line up like terms. Okay, so it's almost like distributive property. You're going to multiply this x squared back out to each term and put the answer in the correct column. All right, um, so Francisco, what's x squared times x? Yep, x cubed. And what about x squared times negative 3? Negative 3x squared. Okay, so that's, that's step 3. If I didn't, that's why if I didn't put this 0x squared here, I would have had nowhere to line up that negative 3. Okay, now you're going to subtract the two columns that we just did. Um, you know what? I think my step is one off. That's step 3. And that's actually step two. Sorry about that. All right, so now you're going to subtract the columns that we just created in step three. So what I like to do, so I remember I'm subtracting both of these, put them in parentheses, and put the subtraction sign in front. Okay, and now subtract both of those. Um, so, Tom, what's x cubed minus x cubed? Zero. Yep, zero. That should always happen. Okay, the first term should always come out to zero. And now we have zero x squared minus minus three x squared. What would that be, Tom? Three x squared. Three x squared. Good. Okay, any questions on, on that? And now you keep repeating that process until you're done. So, well, bring down your next term, just like when you do long division. Okay, you divide, you multiply, subtract, and then bring down the next term. And now repeat that process until either one of two things happens. Either you end up with uh, no remainder, and then you're done, or the degree of your remainder is less than the degree of your divisor. Okay, because once, once this term here is below, once it's a constant, I can't divide x into a constant. Okay, so once I get down to a constant in this case, then I know I'm done. I can still divide x into x squared, or 3x squared. Okay, so I need, I need to do that. All right, so um, Amanda, what do I get if I divide x into 3x squared? Yeah, 3x. Now you're going to multiply that back out, line everything up in the correct column. Okay, so Jeff, what's um, 3x times x? 3x squared. Yep, 3x squared. And how about 3x times negative 3? Uh, negative 9. Yeah, good, negative 9x. So we did the division. We did the multiplication. Now we're going to subtract everything and then bring down our next term. All right, so Zach, what's 3x squared minus 3x squared? Zero. Yep, that's gone. Um, Grayson, what's negative 8x minus minus 9x? X. Right, it's really going to become negative 8x plus 9x, which is just x. Now I'll bring down my next term. But I can still divide x into x. Okay, I'm not, I'm not done yet. But at each step, the degree becomes one smaller. We started with a cubic. After our first round of doing this, we ended up with a squared. After the second round, we ended up with just an x to the first. And this is going to be the last time through the process. All right, so Taylor, what's, um, how many times does x go into x? One. Once. Now, if all you wanted was your quotient, you're done. That's your quotient. x squared plus 3x plus 1. If you want the remainder, we need to keep going okay, to get the remainder. So just finish it up. Multiply 1 back out to x. Multiply 1 back out to negative 3. And remember, you're subtracting. So be careful, because some people are tempted to say, oh, remainder is 0. But it's not 0 because you're subtracting negative 3. So what's my remainder here? 6. six. 
And now I know I'm done because I don't have anything else to bring down, and I can't divide x into 6. Okay, this is a little different if you're following along in the book um, than example one, so this, this problem is slightly different. Any questions on that one? All right, so the way you can write your answer, um, for now we could just we could write it in two parts. We could say the quotient is x squared plus 3x plus 1. And the remainder is 6. Okay, another way you can do it, um, let, me, let me show you with um, actual numbers. Okay, and then I'll show you how you could do it with this one. Let's say you did um, 13 divided by 3. What's the quotient when you do that? Yep, quotient's 4. And what's the remainder? 1. 1. So that's one way you might have written your answer like when you first learned long division, like 4 R1 or 4 remainder 1. But you can also do it like this. You can say 4 plus, and then you can take your remainder over your denominator. Okay? 4 plus 1 third, which in this case 13 divided by 3 is 4 and one third. So you can take quotient plus your remainder divided by, let's make, just make sure we understand our terms here. What, what is the three? Like when you do your, when you do long division, what, what's the three? What term is that? Allie? That's your divisor. And what about the 13? Dividend. That's your dividend. Okay, just to make sure we understand those terms. Divisor's on the outside, dividend's on the inside. All right, so you can take your quotient plus your remainder over your dividend.
the number on the outside. Uh, he's divisor, thank you. I'm sure I understand the terms. Yeah, divisors on the outside, dividends on the inside. So you know what, just so there's no confusion, I'll just write it out. Quotient plus remainder over divisor. So what you could do for this problem, if you didn't want to write it as quotient and remainder, you could write it as x squared plus 3x plus 1 plus 6 divided by x minus 3. Okay. 6 is my remainder. x minus 3, that's my divisor. So I could, I could write it that way as well. The second way I told you how to write it, that's how I'd do it if I wanted to check my answer. I could type in what I just said, graph it, graph like the original problem, and I could, I could figure out if, if they match up. All right, so let's try, um, let's try this one. Okay, so this time we were missing a term. I already filled it in for you. So we've got every power represented from four all the way down to the constant. Actually, we're missing two terms, the, co the quadratic term and the linear term. All right, so Pacey, what's going to be the first thing I do? I'm going to divide um, what term into what term? Um, you're going to divide 2x squared yep. into the uh, 2x to the fourth. Yes, I'm going to divide 2x squared into 2x to the fourth. So off to the side or kind of in your head, this is the calculation you need to do. Right, so Alyssa, um, what do I get when I divide 2x to the 4th by 2x squared? X squared? Yeah, we just get x squared. Okay, you'll know you did this step right if when you multiply it back out, you get the first term. x squared times 2x squared, that is 2x to the 4th. Um, x squared times x, uh, Francisco? x to the third. And Rachel, what's x squared times 1? Um, mm, the only way you get 2x squared is if you did x squared times 2. That would be 2x squared. So in this case, x squared, you're multiplying by 1. Anytime you multiply by 1, it just stays the same. Oh. All right, so x squared times 1 is x squared. Okay, um, Taylor, what's my next step now that I did the multiplication? Um, subtract. Subtract, yep. And remember, you're subtracting everything. All right, so how about uh, Quinn? What's 2x to the fourth minus 2x to the fourth? Zero. That's gone. Andrew? Negative x cubed minus x cubed. Yep, negative 2x cubed. And 0x squared minus x squared is negative x squared. Okay, so we did that. And now bring down your next term, which is 0x. All right, so Allie, what am I going to divide into what now? And what would that give me? Negative 2x cubed divided by 2x squared. Yeah, the 2's cancel. 3 minus 2 gives you an exponent of 1. And you have a negative out in front. Okay, it's a negative x. And now multiply that back out. Um, Dave, what's negative x times 2x squared? Negative x times 2x squared is uh, negative 2x to the third. Yep, negative 2x to the third. Uh, how about Molly? What's negative x times positive x? Um, uh, negative x squared. Yep, negative x squared. Okay, you might notice something that's going to happen here that it's kind of nice when it happens, but it doesn't always happen. And then negative x times 1 is negative x. Okay, and now we're subtracting. All 
Right, so watch what happens here. You've got negative 2x cubed minus minus. That becomes a plus. So negative 2x cubed plus 2x cubed. That's gone. Negative x squared plus x squared. That's gone. Okay, so if two terms cancel at once, that eliminates having to do a whole other round of this process. Okay, we just eliminated that term. And now we're left with 0x plus x, which is just x. Now, can I go any further with this problem? Well, I can bring down my next term, but besides doing that, can I go any further? No, because the degree here is a 1. The degree on my divisor is a 2. You can't, that doesn't go into that now, okay? Because now this degree is smaller than that degree. Okay, so, so we're done. Our remainder here is x minus 2. So you can write your quotient and your remainder. Okay, any questions on that? All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to let x equal c. And I want you to see what happens when you do that. Okay, you're going to notice, hopefully you're going to notice something. All right, and this is going to give us a nice shortcut to figure something out. Okay, so if I let x equal c, okay, everywhere I have an x, I'm going to change it to a c. So I start out with that. Okay, instead of f of x, anywhere you get an x, make, change it into a c. So what happens if you let x equal c? Anybody see what's going to happen there? Oh, Tom, what do you think? What's happening there if you let x equal c? What's going to cancel? Uh, x minus c is now c minus c. It becomes c minus c. And what's that? Zero. And then. What happens if that becomes zero? You're just left with what? Just the Well, you're on the right track. I like the idea that c minus c is zero. I just want to know kind of what this would simplify to from there. Yeah? Would it just be r? It would just be an r. So notice, if you let x equal c, f of c is equal to your what? Uh, your constant, and in this case, your constant is the, it's the remainder. All right, so basically, what I'm showing you is a shortcut to find just the remainder. That's all that this is going to do. Okay. So basically, what we can do is, if we're dividing by something that's of the form x minus c, all you have to do is plug c into the original function, and the answer will come out to the remainder. Okay? And that's called the remainder theorem. Okay? It gives you a quick way to find the remainder if that's all you want to know. Okay, so if f of x is divided by x minus c, you can find the remainder by taking the number after the minus sign. Okay, that's the key here, the number after the minus sign, and plugging it into your numerator. Okay, it just happens, it, the way it cancels things out, you'll be left with just your remainder. Now, anybody tell me why might you want to know just the remainder? Why, why could that be significant when you do a long division problem?
Well, what can the remainder tell you about something when you divide two things? What's um, something special the remainder could come out to? Zero. Could come out to zero. Okay. And what does that mean if you divide two things and get a remainder of zero? That, that's very important. Yeah. The divisor is a factor. Yes. That tells you if something is a factor. Okay. So eventually that's going to lead us this, to our next theorem where if we get a remainder of zero, we know that what you just divided by is a factor. And now we're set up to factor more complicated problems. All right. So for this one, all I want to know is the remainder. Okay, I don't care about the quotient. So we're going to divide f of x by h of x. And then we'll divide f of x by g of x. So I'll just kind of make a, make a chart. So f of x divided by g of x, and then I'll do the calculation for the remainder. Okay, um, Ali, what's, uh, what's h of x in this case? x minus 3. x minus 3. So what's the number after the minus sign? 3. 3. Plug that into the number, into the top function. So all you really have to do is take this number, Plug it into f of x, and that will tell you the remainder. All right, so we get 3 cubed minus 2 times 3 squared plus 3 minus 5. So 3 cubed gives me 27. Okay, 3 squared gives me 9 times 2 is 18 plus 3 minus 5. Okay, what's... Um, What's 27 minus 18? 9. What's 9 plus 3? 12. 12, and then 12 take away 5. 7. Seven. So if you were to do out all the long division, that would be your remainder. Okay. What's your quotient? Well, there's no quick way to get that. Okay, that you'd have to do it out. So now, if I asked you kind of a follow-up question to that, is h of x a factor of f of x? No. It doesn't go in without a remainder. It's not a factor. What is a factor? Well, we still don't know that. But we know that is not a factor. Okay, let's do f of x divided by g of x. Okay, what, um, what number am I going to plug into function f this time. Remember, it has to be written in this form, x minus a number. This is close, but we just have to be careful. Minus one? Yeah, negative one.
12, and then 12 take away 5, 7. So if you were to do out all the long division, that would be your remainder. Okay, what's your quotient? Well, there's no quick way to get that. Okay, that you'd have to do it out. So now, if I asked you kind of a follow-up question to that, is h of x a factor of f of x? No. It doesn't go in without a remainder. It's not a factor. What is a factor? Well, we still don't know that. But we know that is not a factor. Okay, let's do f of x divided by g of x. Okay, what, um, what number am I going to plug into function f this time? Remember, it has to be written in this form, x minus a number. This is close, but we just have to be careful. Minus 1? Yeah, negative 1. Okay, think of it as x minus negative 1. Now, what's the number after the minus sign? Negative 1. Okay, that's, that's the part where people sometimes mess this up. Okay, so plug negative 1 into the top, and that'll tell you your um, remainder. So we get negative 1 cubed minus 2 times negative 1 squared minus 1 minus 5. Okay, so negative 1 cubed gives me negative 1. Uh, negative 1 squared gives me 1 times negative 2. Okay, what's, um, what's negative 1 minus 2? Negative 3 uh, minus 1. Negative 4 minus 5 more. Negative 9. Okay. So again, we found something that doesn't go in evenly. There's a remainder. So we know g of x is also not a factor of f of x. Okay. We still don't know what is a factor, but that's not what the question was asking. Okay, so any questions on the remainder theorem? Okay, so the way I would give you a problem like that is I would give you some insane numerator that you can't do long division with easily, and I'll ask for the remainder. Okay, like I might do something like x to the 32nd minus 5x to the 28th minus 6x to the 16th plus 2x cubed. There's, there's just so many different zeros you'd have to fill in there. And I'll say divide by x minus 2 and tell me the remainder. Okay, all you have to do is plug 2 into the top, and that would tell you the remainder. Okay, so remainder theorem, um, nice shortcut if that's all you want to know. All right, so this is kind of summarizing what I've, what I've already explained to you. All right, so if you divide by x minus c, okay, we know you can take your divisor times your quotient plus your remainder, and that equals the original. The only thing that's different about this and about this is instead of writing r for remainder, I use the remainder theorem and said how you find r. Take the number you divided by after the minus sign and plug it into your function. Okay? That, that's still your remainder. I'm just showing how you calculate it by the remainder theorem. All right, now suppose that c, okay, the number after the minus sign, is a root. Okay, so now I'm going to suppose that I do divide by something that goes in evenly. Then what that means is this part, f of c, my remainder would come out to 0. Okay, so now applying the, the remainder theorem of that, f of x would equal my divisor times my quotient plus my remainder. So the only thing I'm doing here is now I'm saying, well, suppose it goes in evenly. This part won't exist. Bless you. Okay, you get a remainder of zero, and that's called your factor theorem. Okay, which basically says if you divide something in 
and it gets a remainder of zero, that proves it's a factor. And this is also a biconditional. You can read this statement forwards and backwards. If something is a factor, you will get a remainder of zero. Or if you get a remainder of zero, then that thing is a factor. Okay? It works both ways. And I think this is probably the handiest thing that we really learned today. Okay, but it's based on the remainder theorem and uh, really helps us to fact know how to factor things quickly. So combining the factor theorem with a graphing calculator, that's how you can factor more complicated things. Okay, so I want you to use the factor theorem to prove to me that x plus 2 is a factor of that. So I'm not going to do out all the long division. What do I really just need to check here? When I do the division of these two expressions, I'm hoping that what happens? I get a remainder of zero. So all, I'm, all the factor theorem really is is the remainder theorem with the special case when it comes out to zero. Okay. So just to give these names, let's call this um, f of x and h of x. And I'm going to do h of x. I don't think these are exactly the same letters I used before, but it's fine. OK, and all I want to know is the remainder. So what number will I plug into h of x? to get my remainder. Oh, Quinn? Is it negative 2? Yep, you gotta be careful because you're dividing by x plus 2. Think of it as x minus minus 2. So plug in the number after the minus sign into your numerator and see what you get. Okay, we already know what, what we're hoping to get. So you get negative 2 cubed plus 5 times negative 2 squared plus 5 times negative 2 minus 2. All right, um, Ayla, what's negative 2 cubed? Uh, negative 8. Yep, yeah, negative 8. And Trevor, negative 2 squared Four. times 5? 20. Um, minus 10 minus 2. That's going to give me negative 8 plus 20 is positive 12. 12 minus 10 gives me 2. And 2 minus 2 gives me a remainder of 0. So I proved that when you divide these, these two things, you get remainder 0, which directly means that f of x is a factor of h of x. So now if I wanted to factor, what is it, x cubed plus 5x squared we're not actually going to factor it. I'm just going to show you kind of the thought process. Okay, if you wanted to factor this, I know that it factors into x plus 2 times other stuff. Okay, it factors into x plus 2 times something. Okay, I asked you a question just like this at the beginning. How would I find the something? No, x plus 2 is a factor because that goes in with remainder 0. I want you to factor the number 12. Okay, factor the number 12. 3 is a factor. I'm telling you that. I'll tell you that this is a factor. How do you get the other factor? Yeah? I didn't divide. Um, 
x cubed plus 5x squared plus 5x minus 2 by x plus 2. Right. If you divide the x cubed by x plus 2, you will get the something, okay? which will be some kind of quadratic. Because I know a quadratic times a linear is a cubic. Right. And then maybe from there, you could even factor the quadratic more. So you might end up with three sets of parentheses when you factor this one. Okay. The tricky part would be, how would you figure out this was a factor if I didn't tell you that? That's where the graphing calculator comes in. You would see this graph cross the x-axis right near negative 2. And we could use that to help us. Okay, so these are all equivalent statements about roots. Everything you see here means exactly the same thing. Okay, so suppose that you had some number C that was a root to an equation. That means that if you plug it in to your function, you get zero as the answer. Another way to say that is it's a zero of the function. Okay, another way to say it is that it's a root of the function, which has, again, nothing to do with square roots or cube roots. Okay, the last way you can say it, I'm going to come back to the fourth way, but the last way is you could say it is that means it's an x-intercept. C is where the graph crosses the x-axis. But this way is very important. If C is a root, then that proves x minus c is a factor. How do we know that? We just, we just did a problem about that. Okay. If you plug that in, use the remainder theorem, and it, c is a root, okay, that means your factor you divided by doesn't have a remainder, which means it's a factor. Okay. We're going to use this idea in a second and kind of work backwards. I'm going to tell you a problem that has certain roots. And I want you to work backwards and tell me what the original problem would have been. Okay, so keep this in mind. If c is a root, that means x minus c is a factor. Okay, so I want you to find a third degree polynomial. Okay, no imaginary numbers, just all real numbers. And I want it to have roots of negative 2, 1, and 3. Now, I do this all the time when I'm graphing problems for you guys on the calculator, and I want to quickly make a graph that I know is going to cross the x-axis in certain spots. And this is how I, how I do it. Okay, so you're going to look at each number individually. Okay, start with negative 2. Okay, negative 2 is a root of my function. Okay. I don't know the function. That, that's what I'm trying to figure out. So if negative 2 is a root, what does that mean would be a factor? Ellen? X plus 2. Yes, x plus 2 is one of the factors. Now if 1 is a root, what would be a factor? Yeah? X minus, one. X minus 1 would be a factor. And if 3 is a root, what would be my final factor? X minus, three. X minus 3. Now, if they didn't care how you leave the answer, technically that's fine. But let's, um, let's just foil this out real quick. So we get x squared minus x plus 2. And then 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. Okay, so I just foiled the first two. And now I'm going to foil the last one. So I'm basically undoing the factoring. All right, so that's going to give me um, x cubed plus x squared minus 2x minus 3x squared minus 3x plus 6. Okay, and now combine like terms. So we have x cubed. Um, we have an x squared take away 3x squared, which is how much? Yep, negative 2x squared. I have a negative 2x minus 3x. That's a minus 5x, and then a plus 6. 
So there is a polynomial, and let's graph it, that it should cross the x-axis at negative 2, 1, and 3. Right, so we have x cubed oops, minus 2x squared minus 5x plus 6. Okay, so it's, there it is crossing at negative 2, positive 1, positive 3. Okay, any questions on that? So that's how you can make a polynomial that crosses in those three spots. And it also happened to be a degree 3. Does anybody know how I could make that a degree 4? But I don't want to have it cross at any additional points. How could I make that a degree 4, but still just have it cross in these three spots? Well, if it's a degree 4, how many sets of parentheses would I have to have? I'd have to have four sets, okay? So what could I add for a fourth set of parentheses that would give me another factor, but it wouldn't cross anywhere new? What could I put? There's a few different things I could put. Wouldn't be x minus 0? Um, then it would force it to cross at 0 if you put in x minus 0, or just x. What else could I put for a factor that wouldn't introduce a new crossing point? Not sure. I'll let you think about that. Okay, that maybe that question will come back come back later on. All right, so this one, okay, last two, both of them, they're giving us the problems and they want us to find, find the roots. Okay, this is a cubic. So how many roots could it have? Up to how many? At most three. Could it have two? Yep, could it have one? Yep, could it have zero? No. Think about the end behaviors of a cubic. One end is always down, one end is always up. So this, the range of this function is from negative infinity to infinity, and these are continuous. They're always connected. So you're going to go through zero at least once, up to three times. Okay, so it gives us the suggestion of factor by grouping. Okay, so that's where you try to factor what you can out of the first two, factor what you can separately out of the last two, and hopefully, once you do that, something nice happens. Right, so um, Josh, what can I factor out of the first two terms? Factor out of x squared. Oh, can you tell me what that would leave me with? That would leave you with x plus 2x. No, plus 2. Yep, just x plus 2. Okay, and how about the second two terms? Rachel, do you see what I could factor out of those two? Um, so it's got to be something that both this and this have in common. So I definitely see they have a negative in common. Um, and then since this is just a constant, this one doesn't have any letters. So we're not going to be able to factor a letter out of this part. So what we can factor out here is going to be a little simpler than what we factored out of the first two, because this is just a number. So it would be negative 4. So yeah, the only thing that these both have in common is a negative, and you can factor out a 4. Okay, and Francisco, if I factor out a negative 4 from the second part, what does that lead me with? Would that be negative, oh, negative 4? Yep. Would that be x minus, oh, x plus 2? Yeah, x plus 2. two. Yeah. 
And when you do factor by grouping, this is what you hope happens. When you do that, somehow you just end up with the same thing in each set of parentheses. And now you can factor this out from both. Okay, so now we'll do that. Okay, Trevor, if I factor out x plus 2 from that first term, what am I left with? x squared. Yeah, just the x squared. And if I factor out x plus 2 from the second term, all I'm left with is a minus 4. Okay, any questions on that? And you could try to distribute, you know, distribute this back out. x plus 2 times x squared. That's the first one. x plus 2 times negative 4. That's the second one. Hey, anybody see anything else we can factor there? Yep. Difference of two squares. Yes, difference mm -hmm. of two squares. Um, we technically factor it to be um, x plus two and x minus two. Yes. What degree, um, so actually, let's write our roots first. And then I'm going to come back to that question that I just asked you. Um, what are my roots here? Yep. Yep, negative 2 from the um, first factors and positive 2. What degree polynomial was this to start with? Trevor? Uh, yep, it was a degree 3. And how many places does it cross the x-axis? Only twice. So what's the, what's the trick to that last problem? Now that you see this one, if I wanted to create another factor here to make this a degree 4. Okay, I have to add another factor. But what could I write right here so I don't introduce another new crossing point? Yeah? One of the factors that are already there. Yes. I could repeat one of the factors that's already here, and it would give it an extra twist or turn in the graph, but it would come back and cross at the same spot. So if you took, took the problem we had, and let's do uh, x minus 3. Let's repeat that root. Okay, so rather than multiply it out, I'm just going to take this and let the calculator do it. So what I've just done is created what's called a repeated root. Usually a repeated root, the graph comes down, it touches that number, and then bounces away from it. And that's what's going to happen, hopefully, at 3. And that's exactly what happened. So now we've got a degree 4 polynomial. It comes down, touches it, bounces away. That's how you know that this is what's called a repeated root. Right? And we'll, we'll talk more about repeated roots and stuff like that later on. OK, so any questions on, on that one? All right. So. Um, last one, this one's kind of, kind of a review. Um, finding, the review finding the roots using a graphing calculator. Okay, so I'll, let me graph let me graph that. So 2x cubed minus 4x squared plus x minus 2. Okay, or maybe I'll use a combination of algebra and a graphing calculator to help me. All right, well, um, how many times does it look like it crosses the x-axis? Just once. Okay. So second, calc, zero. I'm going to find where that root is. And it's at 2. Okay, so that, that's the answer to this problem. There is only one root, and it's at 2. Now. It's a cubic, and it has a root of just one root. So what that means, it could mean one of two things. Either we have what's called a repeated root, in fact, a root repeated three times, or what other kind of roots can you have besides real numbers?
think about something a little simpler. Like when would um, when does x squared equal negative four? What kind of number for x? Yeah. Imaginary. So either we have a root that's repeated or we have a real root and we have a couple imaginary roots that we can't see on the screen. Um, because this one does actually take some twists and turns, um, I know that one root is real here and the other two are imaginary. Okay? So I'm not going to get into um, how you would find the imaginary roots, but the first step would be finding the real root and then we'd go from there. Okay, so we'll see how to do imaginary roots on um, Thursday. Okay, so any questions on um, remainder theorem, factor theorem, any of that stuff? All right, so tomorrow we'll take a look at a um, faster way to do long division that only works for some kind of problems, but when it does work, it's a, it's a real good shortcut. Okay, and uh, the homework tonight, uh, it's page 171. It's, actually, I think I can describe this a little shorter to you. It's 1, 2, 4 through 6. And then it's 9, 11, 13, 15, 17, 19, and 21. Why don't we just say 9 through 21 odd? It might be a little easier to remember. I probably added or took out a few problems at one point, and then it just turned into all odds. Okay. And then 25, 27, and 32. Okay, so we'll look at that uh, first thing tomorrow. And also this week, um, I will be after school for extra help on Thursday in case anybody needs to make up a test or um, just stop by to review for this week's test.